Hi there, welcome back to the latest ASEAN News program, and here are some of our news for you. Antonio Guterres R G20 nations to work together on climate area. James Bay. In a news conference ahead of the meeting of the Group of 20, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres heaped pressure on G20 nations to work together to slow global warming. He said that a week after warning the United Nations Climate Conference in Egypt. There is no way in which we can address the climate uh, challenge that we face. During the annual Group of 20 summit hosted this year by Indonesia on the Indonesian island of Bali, Antonio Guterres said it is essential to break the dramatic geopolitical device to address the climate issue, as he noted on China and United States meeting on the same day. I am uh, convinced that uh, we need to break the dramatic geopolitical divides. And as I said in the COP27, there is no way in which we can address the climate uh, challenge that we face without the cooperation of all G20 members, and in particular, without the cooperation of the two biggest economies, the United States and China. And I'm happy that uh, the two countries uh, had a summit today. Guterres has proposed a climate solidarity pact under which developed economies make additional efforts to limit rising global temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius while providing financial and technical help to speed emerging economies transition to renewable energy sources. Rishi Sunak says G20 condemns Russia's actions in Ukraine. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said that the G20 saw international condemnation of Russia's war in Ukraine. Well, this morning at the G20, we saw international condemnation of Russia's war in Ukraine. And with Russia's foreign minister sitting there, we highlighted both the illegality and barbaric nature of Russia's war and also the devastating impact it is having on people around the world through higher food and energy prices. We have a responsibility to work with our G20 allies to fix the global economy, to grip inflation, but also to safeguard and preserve the international order, and that's what we're going to do. Sunak arrived at the summit in Bali, Indonesia, and is expected to meet Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The British Prime Minister extended his support for Ukraine at the G20 summit while confirming a long-planned order of warships from British defence contractor BAE Systems. The members of the G20 are Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, Indonesia, India, Italy, Japan, Republic of Korea, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkey, the United Kingdom, the United States and the European Union. Chinese Indonesian presidents witnesses trial run of Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Indonesian President Joko Widodo watched an operational trial of the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway via video in Bali, Indonesia, to review the progress of the project, marking bilateral cooperation between the two countries. The Jakarta Banu High Speed Railway is the first high speed railway in Indonesia and Southeast Asia. Hey, sir. China and Indonesia signed an agreement in October 2015 to establish the joint venture to build and operate the railway. Its construction has been in full swing since 2018. The railway is a flagship project that synergizes the China Proposed Belt and Road Initiative, the China Proposed Belt and Road Initiative, and Indonesia's Global Maritime Fulcrum Strategy. Built with Chinese technology, it is a model of cooperation between developing countries. The line is expected to be launched in June 2023, slashing the traveling time between Jakarta and Bandung to just 40 minutes from over three hours. Myanmar military has released Australian economies after three years in jail because of violating a state secrets law. The state media reported that Myanmar's military leaders have released Shan Tarnel, an Australian economist and former advisor to democracy icon Aung San Suu Kyi, and almost 6,000 others from prison under an amnesty. 
Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong said the government welcomed reports regarding Turnell, who had been charged with violating a state secrets law and sentenced in September to three years in jail. Melbourne this morning. Uh, his return will be an enormous relief. Myanmar has been in the political turmoil since the military staged coup in February last year, arresting civilian leaders including Aung San Suu Kyi in the early morning raids. Myanmar junta frees political prisoners. Photographs from the Assistance Association for Myanmar-based independent journalists showed political prisoners released by Myanmar's military junta. Two witnesses told Reuters that they saw a bus leave the notorious insane prison in the commercial capital Yangon with some of those named in the amnesty on board. The state media reported that Myanmar's military rulers granted amnesty to Sean Turnell, an Australian economist and former advisor to democracy icon Aung San Suu Kyi, among nearly 6,000 prisoners to be freed to mark a national holiday. The foreigners were given amnesty for their relationship with other countries and also for humanitarian purposes and had been asked to leave the country. Myanmar has been in turmoil since the military coup in February last year when it arrested civilian leaders including Nobel laureate Suu Kyi, ending a decade of tentative democracy. Altogether, 5,774 prisoners were granted amnesty. A junta spokesperson did not answer Reuters phone calls seeking comment. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, which has been documenting the military's crackdown, said the junta had freed the foreigners to use political pressure. China and Indonesia released joint statement after the leaders meet on sidelines of G20 summit. Intensive strategic partnership and provides integrated plans and roadmap. A joint statement has been released after a meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and Indonesian President Joko Widodo, in which the two countries have agreed to boost their comprehensive strategic partnership and strive towards a shared future. Issues concerning development, vaccine, and drug research. The joint statement says China and Indonesia, as major developing countries and emerging economies, share common ideas, interests, and closely connected future. According to the statement, China and Indonesia have formulated a plan for strengthening the comprehensive strategic partnership. It provides integrated plans and roadmaps for bilateral exchanges and cooperation in the next five years. At the invitation of Indonesian President Joko Widodo, Chinese President Xi Jinping attended the 17th G20 Leaders Summit in Bali, Indonesia. The two leaders held cordial and friendly talks on bilateral cooperation and other major issues concerning the current situation and reached new important consensus on strengthening the China-Indonesia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. APEC economic leaders meeting kicks off with focus on sustainable growth. Leaders of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Economies realized their annual meeting in Bangkok, Thailand to pursue balanced, inclusive and sustainable growth across the region and beyond. It is the first in-person meeting of the APEC economic leaders since 2018 as the world is facing multiple challenges of rising inflation, heightened geopolitical tensions, climate change and prolonged COVID-19 pandemic. The meeting was chaired by Thai Prime Minister Prayu Chan Ocha under the theme of Open Connect Balance. The summit attended by APEC member nations and guest nations. Thailand anti-government protesters against APEC summit and Thailand Prime Minister. Thai anti-government protesters clashed with police as the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC summit got underway. <laughs> Youth activist Patsavarale, who was at the demonstration, said people were protesting against the APEC summit and Thai Prime Minister Payu chan -Ocha. <laughs> Police confronted protesters trying to march to the summit venue in Bangkok, beating them back with batons. Injured activists were seen being carried away and officials said 10 protesters had been arrested.
Witnesses said the protesters had tried to overturn a police car plastered with the posters of Thailand Prime Minister Payur Chan Ocha and Chinese President Xi Jinping. A police official said about 350 protesters had gathered and clashed with police about 10 kilometers or 6 miles from the venue where APEC leaders are meeting. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Stay safe and stay healthy.